Today we'll draw a unicorn with marble textures in Procreate and then I'll teach you how to turn it into a sticker easily. As always, you can find all downloadable materials in the description below. If you post your version on Instagram, please tag me at Tatyworks and I will feature it in my stories. Now let's get started. Let's open Procreate and I'm going to create a new canvas by clicking on the plus icon and then on this plus folder. First of all, let's set the dimensions of the canvas. I will be using the A5 format, which has the width of 1748 pixels and the height of 2480 pixels. The DPI, that is dots per inch, must be 300, especially if you are going to get your stickers printed. Another important setting is the color profile. It has two options. The first one, RGB, is suitable for images that will be displayed on the screen, because not all ways of printing are able to reproduce the full range of colors used by this scheme. There are a few more options inside the profile, but the most commonly used is Display P3. The second tab here is called CMYK. That is the one that designers use for printing. This color profile has many options, and the choice depends on the requirements of your printer, or if you are going to the print shop, you should learn this information beforehand and change it in the settings. I will select the RGB scheme for my drawing, because it has brighter and better colors, to be shown on the iPad screen. And in the end of this video, I will show how you can change the color profile in the finished drawing. I will click Create and rotate the canvas. After that, I'm gonna change the background color. Now I can drag and drop this blue color on the canvas directly from the color palette. We can start drawing the unicorn on the new layer above the background. Let me pick this beige color that comes first in the color palette. I will select the monoline brush which can be found under calligraphy. I want to use the Procreate's new feature that is called reference. If I select the canvas option as the reference, I will see it appearing in this small window. Let me move it up so that I could see how the drawing looks from distance. Now I will start drawing the unicorn's head using the quick shape feature. If I draw the round shape and hold the pencil for a second, it will turn into a perfect ellipse. I can edit it, move to the side and draw another ellipse on the left, which is smaller. I will also edit it a little, click here and drag these dots. After that, I will connect these two ellipses with the curves. The second one will go this way, to the right, and I will fill the shapes by dragging the color inside. Now I'm gonna draw the ear on the same layer. Holding my pencil for a while to get the perfect arc. And draw another one the same way, going down. Let's also fill it with color. I think I made the head a little too big, so I will scale it using the transform tool. Now that's much better. I'm still working on the same layer and now I will draw the neck and the unicorn's body. Just reminding that the streamline of my brush is set to max, which makes it easier to draw the curvy lines where the quick shape tool can't be applied. Half of the body will be covered by the big tail, so here I can just draw the line and it can be fixed later. I will zoom to close the shape. Let's check here too. 
and then I will drag the color. I want to add some details on the head, for that I will create a new layer and select this dark peach color from the color palette. Inside the ear, I am going to draw the shape of a water drop. Connecting, then I will drop the color inside the ear and with the same color and on the same layer I will draw the eyelid. Start with the arc, which I can edit and then draw another one at the bottom. I will fill the resulting shape with a the color, then I am going to switch to the dark violet and draw the simplified lashes. The first curve will go to the right like this and the lower one I'm gonna draw this way. Drawing inside the pencil then I will lower the size of the brush and make a few small adjustments. With the violet color and on the same layer still, I will draw a small circle for the nostril. Tapping my finger on the canvas to make a perfect circle, then dragging the color to fill it. Let me go to the select tool circle it with the free hand and with this arrow I can move it to the left and a little up. Then deselect. I did so because the nostril is located on the same layer as the eye and the ear and if I didn't circle the shape the entire layer would move. I will go and select it again then click copy and paste in the pop-up menu. It will appear on the separate layer. I will place it below and change the color into this peach. Let's click on the arrow and by tapping on the canvas I will carefully move it a little up and to the right. I will duplicate this layer, go to the lower one and another way to change the object's color is to lock the layer, pick white from the color palette, then go back and click fill layer. This time I will move the circle down and to the left. Now it's time to add the mane and the tail to our baby unicorn. For that I will create a new layer above the body, select the peach color and I will be using the monoline brush to draw these random curves to make it look like the curly hair. I won't make it too detailed, because when we add the marble texture later, it will look curly anyway. On the right side I will alternate the shapes to create a messy hair look. And here on the left, I will draw them following one direction. I will place one of such curves in the way, so that it separates the head and the neck visually. I think I should erase this part close to the ear using the monoline. The quick shape works in the eraser mode too, so I can get the good arc if I wait a second. We will continue drawing on the same layer and with the same brush. This time it will be the tail. I will draw an arc starting from this point. Let me edit it. Then I will continue with a curvy line. 
The quick shape is not gonna work in this case, so we better do it slowly and not let the hand shake. Here I can draw with the quick shape again. Let's connect these two curves with the line and after that we will make the tail look curly, same way as we did with the mane. I will change the direction a few times. And then close the shape with this arc. Ok, now I will drop the color. I will pick the color from the body by holding my finger here and go to this layer to fix the body shape. I will fill this big gap by drawing the arc, then connecting and filling. Let's go back to the tail layer, select the peach color again and I will add some more hair on top of the head. I really find this new reference feature useful, because it enables to see how this looks on the drawing and I don't have to zoom out all the time. I will fix the lower part here and then drag the color into the shape. I'm going to create a new layer above this one. Then I will take this light pinkish color and drag it on the canvas from the color palette. I think we should switch these layers off for now, so that they don't distract us from creating the marble effect. Now I will create one more layer above this light background. And we also don't need the reference anymore. First of all let's change the brush into the soft brush from airbrushing. I will be using these colors for the marble. Let's start with this red. I will increase the brush size a little and start drawing this random pattern from left to right. Let's change the color for this orange and add a few strokes between the lines. I will grab this light blue and fill more gaps. Do the same using the bright blue shade. And finally, I want to introduce some whites. We made this base for the texture. Now we should go to Adjustments and pick the Liquify option from the list. I will zoom out so that I could see the entire canvas. And we will start making the marble effect. There are a few ways. The first one is using the Push option, wherein the distortion and pressure values are set to max, and the size is around 50%. Then I'm just moving my pencil around the canvas slowly and it will create this interesting marble pattern. Let's reset to check the second option. You can use both twirl right or left. Just make sure that distortion and pressure are set to maximum here too. And I think I will lower the brush size just a little. Let's start from the left upper corner and go diagonally slowly. The more stops you make, the more curvy it will look. So we better not hurry to get a better and more intense marble effect. This actually can be used as an independent drawing for prints or as a background for lettering designs. If you have any other ideas of how you can use the marble texture, you can share in the comments. 
After we are done with the marbling, we can merge this layer with the one below. I will click on the layer and select Clipping Mask. We could keep the colors as they are, but I'd like to try a new Procreate feature that's called Gradient Map, which can be found in the Adjustment section. I will use it on the layer. Let's check a few. And I will pick the one that is called Venus. I think we can add even more intensity to our marble texture. For that I will go back to Liquify, decrease the size and add it on certain areas of the tail and the mane. Now it is enough. Let's get the invisible layers back and we will draw something that makes a unicorn recognizable. It is the horn. I'm gonna create a new layer above all layers and grab this upper violet color. Let's go to calligraphy to select the monoline brush. I will draw a line with an angle and another one next to it. Connect these two lines with the arc. And I will draw a small arc on top too, to make it look like an ice cream turned upside down. Then drag and drop the color inside the shape. Let's add some decor to it. For that I will create a new layer above this one and clip it. I will begin with the light blue color. And I also want to select a new brush. Let it be dry ink. I will change the size and add a few lines of different colors. Let's pick white. Then peach. Another shade of blue. And more white. The unicorn drawing can be considered done. But we are creating a sticker pack, right? It is supposed to have more elements in it. And we have enough space to add something else. So let's go to the layer with the tail base color. And to fasten the process, I will add some stamps from my Sweet Party brush set. Here I have the star pen, which can be also used as a stamp. Tap somewhere on the canvas. The star got the marble texture automatically, because we have it clipped to the current layer. I will also add the dot stamp on the same layer. One more in this corner. We can add not only drawing elements, but also text. For that we need to go to the layer below this one. Because if we stay, the text will appear one level up. And it will get clipped to the current layer, which we don't want to happen. So we go here to make the text appear on top of it and this way it won't be clipped. I'm going to Actions, Add Text and I will type the word. For example, Unicorn. I will change the font for something handwriting looking. I will resize it, rotate and move to the side. When placing the objects, remember that there will be this white border around each element and they shouldn't come too close to each other. If we merge the text layer with this one, it will get the marble texture too. 
Let's go one layer down again and I want to show you something. I'm going to add text option again and there is this interesting font. Let me find it. Ok, it is called Bodoni Ornaments. Instead of letters and numbers, it has different flowers and other cool and cute elements. You can pick the ones that you like. My personal favorites are number 6 from numbers, and I also like letter Z from letters. It looks like a tulip flower. I will resize and rotate it and then find a good place for it. We can finally merge these layers too. Of course you may add as many more elements as you wish. It can be a stamp, handwriting or drawing, but you should keep them on this layer after all. When you think you have enough elements on your sticker sheet, we can go and merge all the layers except the blue background layer. And I will duplicate it. Let's go to the lower layer and lock it by swiping two fingers to the right. Select the white color, then click on layer and select the fill layer option. After that, we can unlock it by swiping two fingers again. Let's go to Selection tool, pick Automatic and tap somewhere on the background to select it. Then go to Feather and set the amount to 9%. We will get these small blurred gaps between the drawing and the background. After that I will select the black color from color disk and drag it on the canvas. Without lifting the pencil from the canvas, I will adjust the color drop threshold and set it to 3.1%. Now we can see these blue borders around every element from the sticker sheet. If we turn this layer off, this is what we got. The shapes need to be all white and we can easily fix it the following way. We are going to selection again. Automatic option picked. I will tap on the background so that it is selected. When I click invert, this is what happens. Now we got everything on this layer selected except the background. That's how the invert function works. I will open the layer, select the white color and click fill layer. Seems that we got what we wanted. The only thing is that we need to get rid of this black background. It is also very easy. Go into selection third time. It is still automatic. I'm clicking on the background, then go into the layer and clicking on clear. Looks like stickers now. If you want to post the work somewhere, we can add the shadow to it to make it look cool. To do that, I will duplicate this white layer. Alpha lock it. Fill with black. And then unlock. I will click on this arrow and move it to the right upper corner just a tiny bit by tapping on the canvas. Then go to Adjustments and apply Gaussian Blur on the layer. The amount I set is around 3%. I'm going back to the layer to change the opacity to 40%. We have the image ready for post on social media or a website if we save it as PNG. But if you want to get the stickers printed, there are a few more steps to do. First of all, I will turn the shadow layer off together with the blue background and the Procreate background. Now we can save it as PNG with transparent background and print. 
But as I said in the beginning of the video, the colors may look different from what we see on the screen when printed, because we've been drawing using RGB color scheme. To transfer the colors into CMYK profile, we need to do the following. Go to gallery and create a new canvas with the same dimensions. Go to color profile tab and pick the required CMYK mode. The most commonly used one from this list is generic. I will click on create. Go back to my drawing, select these two layers, drag and drop them on the new canvas. All I need is to change the order. I will toggle the visibility of the background and delete the unnecessary layer. I think you can see that the colors look a bit different now. Even when we go to the disk, we can see the difference. There is one more thing. If you save it as PNG, it will be still saved in the RGB profile. To keep it CMYK, we should save it as PSD or TIFF. That's all what I wanted to tell you about creating stickers. Please let me know in comments if this video was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified about upcoming tutorials. If you post your drawing on Instagram, tag me to get featured. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.